Amen. Just grab your Bibles, grab your Bible, grab your app, iPad. If you're like me, I'm still old school. I need this thing in my hand. Amen. So grab it, grab it, and just join me in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And while you are turning your pages to Mark chapter 5, I do want to just give honor to whom honor is due, amen. First of all, that is to God, our Father, amen, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and to Pastor Taylor and his family in his absence, amen. Isn't God good to just bless us, amen, with a, with a man of God and just a family of God like we have, amen? Amen. Yes, we are absolutely thankful to God for him and his family and for all the things that he do, amen, in the body of Christ. Thank you. Mark chapter 5, and when you get Mark chapter 5, we're going to begin our reading at the 21st verse, amen, the 21st verse. And we're going to read verses number 21 through 24, and then we'll skip down and we'll join in again at verse number 35, and we'll read through verse number 43, amen. A very familiar text, I'm sure you probably can quote it to yourself, but let me read it in your hearing. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible, and my Bible reads like this. Jesus got into the boat and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then, leaders, then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, My daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Verse 35. And while he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There is no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard what they said to Jairus, and he said, don't be afraid. Have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let them go any further with him except Peter, James, John, the brother of James. And when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing, and he went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. And the crowd laughed at him. But he made them all leave, and he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was, where the girl was laying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. And they were overwhelmed and totally amazed. And Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them, give her something to eat. Amen. I want to tag this text this morning with, with this thought in our mind. God can turn it around. God can turn it around. Yes, he can. Don't matter what you're going through, he can turn it around. Yes. It don't matter what it is that you are dealing with, God can turn it around. Turn it, around. Yes, yes. it don't matter what they said about it, God can turn it, turn it around. You're going to get this in a minute. It doesn't matter what they say about you, God can there you go. God can turn that thing around, my brothers and sisters. He can turn it around. In Mark chapter 5, when you have some free time, read the whole entire chapter of Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5, we find three miracles that Jesus do, does. Number one, you'll find that Jesus heals a man, a demoniac man, who finds himself in the grave finds himself constantly cutting himself, the Bible says, with stones. 
and everybody everywhere tried to do what they could to help him, but nobody could help him. So they, all, so they found him late at night in the grave. And the Bible said that Jesus came on the scene. And Jesus, who was the only one could help him, cast out the demons and the brother life was turned around. Turned around. And as you move further into Mark chapter 5, you will find the woman with an issue of blood. And the Bible says that she had been, she had used all of her resources. She went to all kind of doctors and used everything she could to find a healing for her situation. But the Bible said that there was nothing that they could do. But then while Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house, the Bible said that this lady with the issue of blood got down real low and said, if I could just touch him, the garment, I shall be made whole. And guess what happened? He touched her garment. He, she touched his garment and her whole life was turned around. All I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, that God can turn it around. And through those first two miracles, we find that, number one, that Jesus has authority over demonic forces. And secondly, we find that Jesus has the power to heal. And finally, in today's text, you're going to discover that Jesus has the power to raise the dead. Jesus has the power to restore some dead, some dead, um, some dead situations. He has the power to, to lift up some dead lives. He has the power to turn it around. And my brothers and sisters, for those of us who have lived life for just a little while, we discover that life will life you, if you will. Follow me. In this life, if you just hang on for a little while, you will discover that life will ruin your situation. Life has a way of getting right into your itinerary and just disrupting what it is that you have going on. Life has a way of, of getting in to, to your life and, and making a mess of your life. And there are several ways that, that, that these things can get in your life. Number one, it can get in your life because you can find yourself or one of your loved ones can go to the doctor on a routine checkup, only discover that what you thought was a routine uh, checkup turns into a disastrous checkup because they discovered something that you never know was there. Because life is full of the unexpected. Life is full of the uns in life. And my brothers and sisters, if you live long enough, you will find out that there are some things that will devastate you in this life. It will mess you up. And that's what we find as we jump into the text this morning. We will find this brother by the name of Jairus. And Jairus was not just an ordinary brother. He was a brother of status. And the Bible said that he was a leader of the synagogue. A well-known brother. Brother with status. People knew him. Had a good reputation. Knew his face across the city because after all, everybody was coming to the synagogue. They knew Jairus. Jairus had it going on. He was well connected. People liked Jairus. And people, people admired Jairus. Jairus had a real good thing going on. Just like you, just like some of us in here this morning. We have high positions. We got well good connections. And we really got it going on. But my brothers and sisters, life will interrupt Life will interrupt your itinerary. The things that you have planned, life can get right in the middle of it. And so that's what we find that's happening with Jairus, a brother that had it going on. And the Bible says his daughter was on the brink of death. His, his daughter was on the brink of death. But there's one thing I love about Jairus, and that is that Jairus, as high affluent as he was, as well known as he was, found himself running to Jesus. 
running to Jesus. Why? Because the very thing that was the very thing that was messing with him, the very thing that was in him, the loss of his daughter, he did not have anything to do that could save her life. No matter what he did, you got to imagine he had it going on. He was well connected. He probably had every kind of doctor to come by and check a look at her. But there was nothing that they could do. But Jairus, this man of high status, finds himself running to Jesus. And the Bible says that when he saw Jesus, he fell down at his feet. And my brothers and sisters, again, this is just a reminder that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter how high on your position. There are some things in this life that will bring you to your knees. They will bring you to your knees. And so there he find Jairus, a brother that had it going on, down at Jesus' feet. And the Bible said that he was Begging, in a real sense, begging Jesus, Lord, please, please, Lord, if you would just lay your hands on her, I know that she will live and not die. And I don't know about you, but I can, I can tell you, I'm so glad that Jesus laid his hands on me. I'm so glad that he laid his hands on me. And I'm sure there's a whole lot of us in here this morning that can testify that if Jesus had not laid his hands on you, you wouldn't be sitting in this place this morning. If he had not laid his hands on you, you would have been lost your mind long time ago. I'm so glad he laid his hands on me. Laid his hands on you. And the Bible said that if he would just... Mm, you about to say it. If he would just put his hands on him. Jairus says, I know my daughter will live. That's the kind of faith that you and I have to have if we want God to move on our behalf. We got to know without a doubt that if God put his hands on it, he will change our situation. And that's the problem with a lot of us is because we still high in ourselves and we think we got enough money to pay for it. We think we're educated enough that we're smart enough to talk our way out of it. And we think that we well connected. We can get connected with somebody who can get us out of it. But I told you, life will life you, will bring you to your knees and cause you to realize that can't nobody help me in this situation but Jesus but Jesus, and that's exactly where God wants all of us to be in life. He wants us to get to a point in our lives where you look around and there ain't nobody you can call but Jesus. That's why late in the midnight hour when nobody else around, tears are falling from your eyes. That's Jesus speaking to your heart, letting you know that even in the midst of what you're going through, I'm with you. Lord, lay your hands on her. If you lay your hands on her, She'll be healed. And then the Bible says that while Jesus, while Zairus called out to Jesus, the text says, I love this part right here. He says, Jesus went with him. See, that's, that's, that's funny to me because nobody, nobody got happy right there. Because... <laughs> You don't recognize, perhaps, how important, how important it is to have Jesus to go with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. It's very important for you to understand that no matter where you go in this life, what you do in this life, you better take the Lord with you. Don't you ever think that it's so, it's so easy and it's so, it's so insignificant that I can go and do it without the Lord. Because there's a whole lot of us can testify that I thought I was getting into something that was real simple and realized I got into some stuff that was over my head. Why? Because I didn't take the Lord with me. But on the other hand, there's a whole lot of us can testify again that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, ain't no telling where I'd be. I would have went and did it anyway. And the only reason I didn't do it is because the Lord had his hands on me. It wasn't because I didn't want to do it. I couldn't do it. Because when I tried to do it, he was pulling me back. 
So don't get it twisted. Don't think that it was all about you and you had strength within yourself to keep you from doing what your mind really wanted you to do. If it had not been for the Lord, you would have did it anyway. Take Jesus with him is what the text says. It says, he went with Jairus. But here's the thing. While Jesus was going with Jairus, the text says he was going. Read your Bible when you get home. And it says that while he was on his way to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue of blood steps on the scene. Steps on the scene. Right in the middle. She dug her way through the crowd and touched Jesus. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? And his disciples said, Lord, I don't know who touched you. Lord, all these people around you, I don't know who touched you. I don't know who did it. But God knew. And while Jesus, the Bible, the text says, while Jesus was talking to this woman with an issue of blood, guess what happened? Jairus' daughter died. She died. While Jesus was on his way to deal with our issues, Jesus stopped and started dealing with somebody else's issues. And while Jesus was dealing with somebody else's issue, my situation got worse. I feel some kind of way now. Can you imagine how Jairus must have felt? Felt. I mean, Lord, I came to you first. And now my daughter is dead. This, this woman had her issue for 12 years, Lord. She could have easily waited another 30, 40 minutes. You could have waited. She had had it 12 years. Could have waited. Now, now my, now my daughter dead. Now she dead. She dead because you stop. And that's the same thing you remember in your Bible. That's the same thing that has happened with, with Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. Lazarus had died and Martha and Mary at, one, at a time ran up to Jesus and said, Lord, if you would have been here, if you would have been here, my daughter, I mean, my brother would not have died. My, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said to Martha, he says, Martha, your brother shall rise again. Martha said, well, Lord, I know he's going to rise again. I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said, Martha, you're looking at who you're talking about. I am the resurrection. I am the life. It's me. I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. And if you believe to see the glory of God, I'm going to raise him up again. And all I'm trying to tell you is he's a resurrecting God. It doesn't matter how bad your situation is. He's got the power to raise it up again. It doesn't matter how dead it looks. He can raise it up again. All I'm trying to tell you, he can turn it around. He can turn it around. He can turn it around. And he says, Lord, my daughter is dead. And the Bible says that when the messengers left from Jairus' house and came and said it to Jairus, watch this. They said, your daughter is dead. And while Jesus was speaking to the woman of the issue, with the issue of blood, he spins around and, he spins around and speaks to Jairus and says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have faith. Believe. Because what Jesus was doing was intercepting what he was being told. He didn't want him to receive it because Jesus had already known that situation is not as bad as it looked. And what happens is a lot of times waiting can get on our nerve. Waiting can get on our nerve. And because while we are waiting, doubt begins to set in. Unbelief begins to set in. 
Because we are waiting on God to do something that he said he was going to do, but it's taking too long. Doubt begins to sit in. Can you or are you able to wait on God? That's a good question. Can you or are you willing to wait on God? No matter what it looked like and no matter how long it takes. Are you willing to wait? That's a good question. Because number one, you don't know how long you're going to have to wait. You don't know how long you're going to have to wait. When, when in the Old Testament, when, when God called Noah to build a boat, Noah had to build a boat for 15 years. No rain, no nothing. Everybody talking about him saying, man, you're a fool right here. It ain't never rain. You're a fool. You're a fool. But all the while, all you heard Noah doing was... Don't matter what they say. It don't matter what it looked like. You keep on taking your cues from God. If God said it's going to happen, if he said build a boat and it ain't rained in 10 years, all you need to hear is let them, let them laugh. They can laugh all they want to. They can let them laugh. Let them laugh. My mama, when I was growing up in, in my house, I'm going to tell you what we used to do. When my mom and dad would chastise one of my siblings, we used to sit back and we'd be laughing. <laughs> laughing. And mama would turn around and say, all right, because I know how to turn that laugh into a cry. <laughs> I know how to turn that laugh into a cry. Let them laugh because the Bible says in the last day, there are going to be some folk that's going to be crying and there's going to be some gashing of the teeth. Let them laugh. Yeah. You just keep on doing what God say do. You keep on doing what God say do. And, and God tells Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Because your daughter is not dead. Your daughter is not dead. Because Jesus is not bound by time. Mm, 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 mm. Listen, God ain't moved by time. I don't care how quick you want God to move. God move when God want to move. I don't care if it's been 10 years. God said if it's take 20, you're going to have to wait 20. It ain't nothing that you're going to do going to make God move any faster than what God going to do. Why? Because God is not bound by time. God don't move in time. God operates outside of time. So it, it, it's not like he's on your clock. Well, Lord, I'm, I'm about 35 now, and you told me I'm going to be married with some kids, but I'm 35. God said, if you got to wait till you're 55, I can still do what I told you I was going to do. You just wait. You just wait. You just wait. Because he's, he's the Bible says he's the everlasting God. He's the eternal and blessed God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and, and the end. And with God, God never had a beginning. And God never will have an ending. There never was a time when he was, and there will never be a time when he is not. God is at the very, very, very beginning, and he's going to be there at the very end. You just have to wait. The question is, are you willing to wait? Are you willing to wait? How many of us really, we can testify and we can say, I wish I would have waited. I wish I would have waited on God. I wish I would have waited on God. If I would have waited on God, I wouldn't be in this situation. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of things we got ourselves into. If we would just waited, it probably would have turned out a whole lot better. But I did it anyway. And now I'm paying the consequences of it. Wait on God. I know everybody around you looks like they're getting blessed. 
But spiritual growth ain't in the blessing. It's in the brokenness. It's when God break you down. When God break you down to where you can't do nothing else, that's when spiritual growth comes. Because there ain't nobody else that you can call on but Jesus. So, so, so when you get down at your lowest point in life, you got to get ready because God is growing you up. It don't feel good when you're down there. I ain't going to lie. When you are being broken by God, it don't feel good. It don't feel good. But just because it don't feel good don't mean that it ain't good. I told you my grandmama, we used to ask her for nickels and dimes, and, and grandma would always pull out an apple. <laughs> grandma, you got a dime? She would dig in her purse and pull out an apple. But I learned from that because what grandmama was saying, this apple may not be good to you, but it's good for you. And there's a whole lot of things that you don't want, but it's good. It may not be good to you, but it's good for you. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And so y'all got to flip the page. The messengers meant well. All of us have some friends that come with their own advice. They mean well. What they're telling you, they mean well. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Jairus, your daughter dead. Yeah, I seen her. I seen her, she was dead. <laughs> and they was telling her, him exactly what he saw, what they saw. And, and, that's what, and they meant well. I mean, your friends, they, they seen it. They, they saw everything. And and they meant well. <laughs> but like Pastor Taylor said, one, I think it was a couple weeks ago, he said, unless you was able to touch me, I wasn't there. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> but, but in the real sense, things can look like it on the outside and be totally different on the inside. And so Jesus said, have faith. Don't be afraid. And he continued to walk to Jairus' house. But watch this. He says, the Bible said that Jesus turned around to the crowd. And he says, y'all can't go. None of y'all. Y'all can't go. I only want Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. That's all I want. The rest of y'all, y'all can't go. And here's the message for you. There's some places and spaces and some, some, some journeys that you can't take a crowd with you. You can't take everybody with you. There's some people that's in your circle. They are not allowed to go where God trying to take you. Why? Because they don't understand what God is doing in your life. God is trying to move you somewhere. And because they are not spiritually mature enough to know and handle it, they are trying to talk you out of it. God said, get rid of some of the crowd. Your crowd way too big. Way too big. And he says, Jesus says, give me Peter, James, and John. You know why? Because that was his inner circle. That was the ones that had a real relationship with him. They were the ones that spent a whole lot of time with him. And all God is saying is you need to have an inner circle. You need to get with You need to have some people around you that spend time with God, that know God, that have a relationship with God, and going to get you some good Godly sound advice. That's who you want to take on your journey. Because if you got some carnal Christians following you, the first thing I said, girl, I wouldn't do that if I you're gonna do everything. You're gonna lose all I wouldn't do it. But Jairus laid down everything. Jairus, as I told you, was a leader in the synagogue. And you know, the synagogue was was run by some religious folk that didn't even like Jesus. They couldn't stand it because Jesus was teaching something completely different. But J.I.R. said, you know what? I don't care nothing about what y'all talking about right now. I'll leave this job. You can have this job. You can have this money. You can have this position. You can have this status. You can have all of that because what I need, money came by. What I need, position came by. What I really need, status came by. All I need is Jesus. And if it means I got to lose everything I got, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. 
I'd rather have Jesus. And the Bible said that when they, when they got there, when they got to J. Harris's house, there was a whole lot of noise going on. <laughs> the Bible said that there was a whole lot of commotion because back in those days, they had to have uh, what is known as some, weep, some weeping wailers, some wailing women, if you will, and some flute players. They were professional mourners, and their whole responsibility was, was to just to make a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of crying, because it was, there, it was a way of showing the, the, the importance of the person that, was died, that, was, that had died. So, so the poor people, they probably, the, the poor people only had maybe two flute players and one wailing woman. So they weren't making a whole lot of noise, and that meant that chances are that person probably didn't mean a whole lot. But the one that was at J. Iris' house, they made so much noise that Jesus heard before they got there. So there had to be a whole lot of people making a whole lot of noise. And Jesus got there and said, what is all this commotion about? What is all this going? What is all this noise about? Got into the house and said, this child is not dead. She's alive. And guess what they started doing? They started laughing. They started laughing. They started laughing because they looked at it and said, it's no way, what is he talking about? This girl is, like me saying, who, he, she dead and done donut. She dead. And they started laughing because they knew that she was dead. And Jesus, in their mind, was talk, talking a bunch of foolishness because he's talking about she ain't dead. He's just sleeping. But what they did not know was God is a life giver. Though you be dead, you shall yet live. If you trust and believe in him, though you be dead, you shall live. And I told you he was a, he was a resurrection and a life. So Jesus knew that she was going to rise again. And here it is. The reality was she was literally dead. It wasn't like the sister was sleep, just sleeping. She was dead. But what, what, what Jesus points to us is that if you are in Christ, baby, you don't die. You just rest in the Lord. You don't die. You just go to sleep and rest in God. That's why they say to be absent from the body is to be the present with the Lord. And, and, and Paul had a problem with that. He said, I'm betwixt between wanting to be here with y'all in this body and wanting to be in the presence of God. So for the believer, we don't die. We just go to sleep. In Christ. And the Bible said, in the last day, as the re at the resurrection, those who are in Christ, we're going we gonna to be called up with him. We're going to come with him. And those who are alive on earth are going to be called up and we're going to be all together in the sky. But those that die are going to die in Christ. It's just a resting place in God. So Jesus said, she ain't there. She is just sleeping. And the Bible says that Jesus told Jairus' mother, father, and his three disciples. He called them into the room where the dead girl, where the girl was laying. And the Bible said that Jesus reached out his hands. And with the woman, I'm sorry, with the mother and the father in the background, probably with tears in their eyes, Jesus reaches out his hands and touch the hand of this young girl and says, Talitha, whom? which means little girl, get up. And the Bible said immediately she got up. And not only did she get up, the Bible said she started walking. And Oh, yes, you got to clap there. Because what that means for the believer is that when we put our trust in God, though we be dead, we shall yet live. And the Bible says that when we give our life to Christ, we were spiritually dead. But when we gave our life to Christ, we became a living. We became, we came to life again. We became spiritually alive. There's a whole lot of live folk in here. But on the flip side, there's some dead folk in here. 
And I'm talking about the people who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible classify you as dead. Spiritually dead. But the good news is God is reaching out his hand right now. And he's saying to you, get up. Get up. I don't care what you've been through. Get up. I don't care what you're going through. Get up. I don't care what you did. Get up. <laughs> because the Bible says that when you give your life to Christ, you become a brand new creation. All that old stuff has passed away. And behold, all things become new. And that's some good news because there's some things in my past I'm so glad is left in my past. I'm so glad that stuff ain't still holding me back. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about it. And even if some of my old, old friends bring it up, I tell them I got a brand new walk, man. I don't walk like I used to be. I don't walk that way no more. I don't live that way no more. So you talk about what I used to be. And that's some used to be stuff. Right now, I'm brand new. Brand new. And that's all I'm trying to say to some folk in here who has not received the Lord Jesus Christ. You need a brand new walk. I'm talking about a new walk. And when you talk about a walk in the Bible, we're not talking about the way you walk in the natural because all of us got the cool walk anyway. So he ain't talking about that. He's talking about the way you live your life. The way you live your life. Because walking represents the way you live. And the Bible says that when you are born again, you should have a brand new walk. The things that you desired on the earth, you shouldn't desire no more. You should now decide to start desiring the things that are above and not the things on the earth. Because I'm born again, I'm walking with a brand new walk. And that's it, it is. And that's exactly how it is for Jairus' daughter. This young girl woke up. And the Bible said she started walking and walking all around. And the people that saw her, who was her mama and her daddy and the disciples, the Bible said they got real happy. They start, they got excited. They was amazed. They was like, look at her. Look at her. Because she had a brand new walk. And that's exactly how it is. If you be honest with yourself, that's exactly how it is. When some of your old friends from way, way back check you out now, they be saying, girl, you, you look different. You walk different. You know what? Because I've got a brand new life. The things I used to do, don't do no more. I got a brand new dance partner. Don't dance like I used to do. Used to bump and grind, now I'm just Holy Ghost dancing. And the only thing moving is my arm and my feet. It's a different dance now. He says, she began to walk in. And they were amazed. And we get ready to go home right here. And the Bible said the last thing Jesus said to him, he says, don't y'all tell nobody anything. And you really want the news to get out. That's a good way to do it. Just tell them, don't, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. I'm finna tell you something, but don't tell nobody. We getting ready to have a party. And before you get the, before you go to your car, it's all on the internet. But that's exactly what you want, because you want a real party anyway. So, so go ahead. If you want something to spread, all you got to do is tell folk don't say nothing. Because the news will get out real quick. Because they think they got something to tell. But the part that attracted me was the part that says Jesus' last word was to her mother and her father and her disciples. He said, give her something to eat. Give her something to eat. First of all, yeah, natural food. She'd been, she's been literally dead. She's probably weak in her strength. And yeah, she needs some natural food. But more importantly, she needed some spiritual food. She needed some spiritual food. That's why he looked at the mother. He said, come here, mama. Come here, daddy. He said, feed her. And that's your responsibility, mother. That's your responsibility. Father, you feed your child. You feed your child some spiritual food. And listen, the church do have a responsibility in helping you raise your child in the Lord. But the first responsibility is in your house. Quit trying to blame the church. They don't do nothing. They don't do nothing for kids. What you doing for your child? That's the question. 
Because let me tell you something. If you ain't feeding your child some spiritual food at home, they're going to get fed out in the street. They're going to get fed by the internet. They're going to get fed on, on, on Twitter. They're going to get fed on Facebook. They're going to get some food. And if you want to be ahead of the game, you start pumping them up with some Jesus. You start telling them, you, st you tell them, when you leave this house, come on, boy, come on, girl. We're finna pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, I want you to cover my child in the name of Jesus. No hurt, harm, or danger come upon them. And you send them out on their way. You give them a word. And when they come in, when they come home, when they young, say, what y'all talk about today? Because you got to fill them with the word. And just think about it when you was a child. Those of us who were over, well, <laughs> when grandmamas were real grandmamas back in the day yeah you know what I'm talking about they would tell us about Jesus they, they would tell us about Jesus and that's when we look at the community and we look around the world today and we say well I can't understand it's they, just, just, just crazy out there now you know why because ain't no word going on they ain't getting in school no more you can't pray in school no more and if you weren't praying at your house and ain't praying on school no more, where are they going to get some prayer from? Yeah. Their prayer going to be in the, in, in, in the world. So your responsibility is to feed your child. Amen. And for the born again believer, God says, get up. Yeah. Get up. Get up. Tomorrow is not promised. Get up. You can leave all of that stuff behind if you would just get up. I'm talking about right now. You can get up and come right down to this altar. You can come right down here and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And instantaneously, you will have a brand new life if you would just get up. And I believe God is speaking to somebody. Honestly, God is speaking to somebody's heart and he wants you to get up. I don't care what you did in your past. Get up. I don't care what they think about you. Get up. I don't care what the situation looked like. Get up. God wants you to get up. So I don't know who it is, but if you, if you have never got up and given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get up now. Get up. Get up. And that's the end of my word. That's the end of the word today. That God can turn it around. He can turn it around. He can turn it around. But in order for God to turn it around, you got to have that kind of faith that J. Iris has had. That you got to be willing to lay everything aside in order for you to come in contact with Jesus. You got to lay all your accolades and leave them at the door. And you got to get down on your knees, humble yourself, the Bible says. You got to humble yourself, get down low. And God said, when you get down low, I will raise you up. And when God raised you up, can't nobody tear you down. Amen. 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 So my brothers and sisters, keep on walking. Keep on praying. Keep on talking to your father. And it don't matter what it is that we're going through. God can turn it around. When you get ready to go to sleep tonight and you get down on your knees, you pray to God and ask God, say, Lord, I need you to turn it around. God, God I, 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 I'm at my wit's end. I can't do it no more. God, I need you to turn it around. And when you believe by faith, when you believe it in your heart, God will turn it around. But you got to remember, it's not in your time. You got to keep on believing and don't lose faith. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. God is a good God, y'all. He really is.